as you start writing more and more JavaScript code and talking to a lot of uh, other fellow JavaScript developers, one thing that you're going to hear often, time and time again, is that global variables are bad. You don't want to create global variables. They are evil incarnate. You don't want to do that. And uh, there is a valid reason why people have that belief. It's because in the browser environment, everything you load executes in a single space. All right. So you have a page and that links to like 10 different JavaScript files, say. Each of those JavaScript files could contain code which is written by a completely different person. It could be a library, it could be a fellow teammate who has contributed code to your page. Now, all those scripts execute in a common space in that page. They all execute. Now, if I were to load that page in the browser, they all execute together. It's one common namespace. And that's where the problem lies. If one of those scripts uses a global variable, that means that that variable is available for any of the other scripts to access, or even worse, modify. Okay, so it's available for everybody, and that's where the problem lies. You don't want to create global variables for that reason. The other reason is you don't want to pollute the global namespace. If you've created a variable, you don't want that variable to clash with another global variable that some other library uses. Again, it's going to lead to problem of uh, name clashes and using a variable which you don't really intend to use. And because of all these reasons, you typically prevent uh, you typically avoid using global variables. Now, let's say I have this piece of code, which we actually looked at the exercise. So let me revis revisit that. Let's say I have a var a equals 10 and a var b equals 10. And I do console.log of a plus b. If I were to reload and run this, I am going to get 20, no surprise there. But now let's say this is all my JavaScript does, right? This is all I need to do. For some reason, it's very important for me to declare these two variables and uh, print the sum on the console. I want to do this, but I also don't want to create global variables, right? Now let's say I'm writing this code on a page which includes 10 other libraries. Who knows what global variables they have? Maybe they have a global variable called a, in which case we are in trouble, right? So this when we do var a equals 10, we might be overriding the value of A that the library has. You never know, right? So you don't want to have these as global variables, but you still want to have two variables with the value 10 added up and printed on the console. How do you prevent these from being global? We saw that the best way to prevent these from being global is to create a function, wrap this around in a function. So let me actually do that here. I'm going to create a function. Called my function. And then I move this line of code over here. Now, is this good enough? Well, this is not good enough. Like we've seen, if I were to reload and run this, let me clear this out first. If I reload and run, nothing gets printed on the console. Why? Because while we've created and declared the function, we are not calling it. So that's the next step. Now I need to execute the function by calling this. And now if I were to reload and run, I'm going to get the same functionality. So I'm still assigning those two variables and printing the sum to the console, but now I don't have a global A and a global B. While I have solved that problem, I've actually introduced a new problem. I have removed two globals from the global namespace, but I've actually created a new global in the process. Can you guess what that is? Well, the global here is my function. I've created a function called my function, and now this is a global function. Now, if somebody else in some other library has the function called my function as a global, now again, we have the same problem and we are back to square one. We have created a new global variable here. We don't want to do that, all right? Now, in order to avoid this global variable, what we typically do is, is this structure, which looks a bit funny, but um, hopefully it'll make sense as I explain this. Now, rather than giving this a fun giving this function a name, and then executing the function with that name, what I'm going to do is not give this a name. Okay, so this is an anonymous function. Now, since this does not have a name, it does not pollute the global namespace. But now the problem is, since this does not have a name, I cannot call this, I cannot execute this. This function exists in this space, and then it's gone. There's no way for me to call this function. So the way to call this function while retaining the fact that it's anonymous, is to call this right away as soon as it's declared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this in parentheses. So I'm going to say this anonymous function, nameless function, execute this right away. Okay, you see this? I'm having the open close here. 
So I'm saying this function, which does not have a name, which is gonna get last as I go outside this line. I don't want this to get last. I want this to get executed right away. And after that, I don't care if this function gets last. It doesn't matter. I've got this function executed. All right. So this is this structure. Let me undo this. Uh, this structure is exactly the same as this, what we're doing over here. But the thing is, we are avoiding this name. So rather than give this function a name and execute that function, what I'm doing is I'm taking this function. Let me take this out, cut this. And instead of my function, I'm going to paste that function over here. Okay, and remove the name and wrap the function in parentheses because I have to. This has the exact same result. Now, if I were to clear this and then reload and run, there you go, 20 gets printed. All right, so this is a common structure we see in uh, anonymous functions being executed directly, and this actually has a name. This name is called IIFE. Okay, it's called immediately invoked function expression. This is an anonymous function expression, which also happens to be immediately invoked. It's invoked right away, okay? It's not allocated to a variable, it's not given a name. It's an anonymous function expression that gets immediately invoked, hence the name immediately invoked function expression, or iffy for short. It's commonly referred to as iffy, okay? So this is one way in which you can execute code that needs to be executed right away, but instead of giving wrapping that in a function and giving it a name and then executing it separately, you just execute it in line with an anonymous function. And again, to summarize the benefits of this iffy, now I cannot access A or B over here. If I were to get access to the value of A or B, it would give me a runtime error because the scope is now restricted to this block. I'm not polluting the global namespace. And secondly, since the function doesn't have a name, me wrapping this up in a function is not polluting the global namespace with a function name as well, right? It's anonymous and it's also a wrapper which is perfect for what we want.